Hello everyone and welcome to this special video of Alan Wake 2. So what is this video about exactly? Well, after finishing the game proper and actually playing through the DLCs, which we haven't gotten to yet, um, I actually spent the last just under a week playing through the final draft, the New Game Plus version of Alan Wake. And we were originally told that it was supposed to explain some of the questions that we may have had, like go into more detail, explore some more lore, that kind of stuff. So what I thought I would do is I recorded most of my uh, playthrough of replay through of Alan Wake 2 and uh, wanted to basically show you the differences between the main game and the new game plus. Um, suffice it to say that I don't want to say it's lackluster, but it doesn't really deliver on all its promises, but we'll get to that. So the first thing I wanted to note is the intro. Um, it is changed. Um, all it really does is add in a few lines and the main video is basically different. Um, you'll see. Let's check it out. Back to the beginning. With the memory of the past loop already fading fast. But while it lingers, I know there's hope. We're not doomed to repeat our failures in an eternal loop. This is a spiral. So as you can see, not really much of a difference in terms of what's going on. Um, it certainly brings to question whether this is a spiral or a loop, like we were initially told. It seems more of a loop than a spiral, but hey, that's what the game says, right? So next is there are actually a few extra manuscript pages that you find as Saga um, throughout the game that were not available in the initial run through. You, you can only access these through New Game Plus. So even if you start a brand new game, you won't be able to access these manuscripts until you play the new Game Plus version of that uh, save file, I guess. Uh, there is one I accidentally did not pick up, but uh, I did manage to find a fellow YouTuber uh, by the name of Attack on Full Metal who actually did record uh, him or her picking up the manuscript and, you know, showing it off. So uh, I will be giving full credit to this person, but the other ones I did manage to pick up. And let's uh, let's look through them in in sequential order. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do what? Entertain some. Saga bent down to inspect the body on the table. Somehow it felt familiar. The straps, the heart, the mutilated corpse laying on the rain-soaked wood. Like deja vu. She chased the source of the feeling. Found nothing. None of the victims from her past cases resembled this one. It didn't feel like anything from her past. More like... Something from a dream. From a life she could barely remember. Maybe one that wasn't even hers. Then the feeling passed. Like a shadow in the trees shifting with the wind. Saga blinked. Shook the feeling from her head. She turned her focus back on the work. There was a lot to do. Casing the deputy were watching her. She had a feeling this would be an exciting case. The writer of the first word, not the writer of the last. With the terror of the light and the shadow cast. The third eye now open to project the night. This is the moment to write. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you are gone. Lost on the shore between the forest and the ocean. The owl and the deer reflected in motion. In his room, he will hurt her. In hers, he is caught. His story ends. Her story does not. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you are gone. 
Dr. Jules Marmont sprinted down the corridor. His lab coat fluttered after him. Red lights flashed on the walls. Sirens screamed. Marmont couldn't stop smiling. It was his experiment that had triggered the alarms. In his world, alarms meant progress. This could be the breakthrough he had been waiting for. He would be the one to get his name in the annals of FBC history. Not his wife, Diana. Not darling, that smirking asshole. At the far end of the corridor, the lights suddenly blinked out. The red lights went dark with increasing speed. A wall of darkness rushing toward him. The alarms warbled and died. Marmont stopped in his tracks. He admired the purity of the darkness as it swallowed him. A final spark of pride flashed through his mind. This was his work. His breakthrough. A pale balloon in the sky float and sink deeper. Night springs when bright falls for this sleeper. The surface disturbed, the reflection now a traitor. In the cavity of the skull, turn to a crater. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you are gone. The surface of the lake was a black mirror. The upside down reflection identical yet darker. A window into a darker world than ours. A doorway. A hush so profound it rang like a scream. As if the last echo of the terror had just died. Inside the steep cliffs of the caldera, everything echoed. An echo chamber. Like a fractured skull. A shadow fell on Cauldron Lake. Something of impossible scale loomed over it, blocking the sky. Ati, the janitor, leaned close. Took a hold of the rim of the crater. Lifted up his janitor's bucket. The water sloshed. Swirled inside like a vortex. Gently humming a tango, he poured the water on the attic floor. So again, doesn't really give any new information uh, that I can really tell. It expands on the poem, the dark poem that we've uh, seen a few times, quite a few times in the game, um, and brings to light the whole deja vu with Saga picking up these manuscripts. But all in all, I mean, it's interesting. I don't want to say it's not, but it doesn't really add anything to uh to the questions that we've asked so the next thing is um that's actually it for saga that those are the only changes that are well one more change uh in her gameplay uh as we play her but it's much later uh pretty much near the end of the game um most of these uh, going forward are allen's so the first one is Every time you go back to Parliament Heights, uh, three times you do. Uh, first, uh, after the going through the subway, then going through the Ocean View Motel, and um, what was the other one? I forget what the uh, what the third one was. But we go back to we go to Parliament Heights three times, and each time when we go into the elevator to go up to uh, Alice's apartment, our apartment, whatever you want to call it. There's a picture of Scratch, a uh, photograph of Scratch uh, in the elevator. Uh, and it's different pictures each time, and there's different dialogue each time. So let's take a look at those. Maybe he was a victim. The cult using his words. Alan. Alice. What was that? Like a ray of warm light, I felt her presence. It gave me strength to go on. Alan, you must hurry. Alice's presence was here. Like the sun coming out from behind dark clouds. It pushed me forward. Alice's presence filled me with light and made me stronger. I had to reach her. 
yeah, so not much going on there. Interesting, to say the least, but nothing that really, you know, answers any questions or anything. So the next one is more of a uh, extended follow-up on the spiral. Like, it's not a loop, it's a spiral uh, line that Alan had at the end of the initial playthrough. This is another video of him kind of rambling about the whole spiral. So let's take a look. So this next one I actually almost missed. Um, and I was actually have been following a guide, uh, an online guide. Funnily enough, there isn't much, uh, you know, breakdown. I can't really find a good breakdown of all the different changes. Like, I'm sure I've missed a few things. But this one I actually almost missed. This is an intro to the Night Springs. Like, it's a promo commercial, basically, for Night Springs by Warland Door. And as you can see from this clip, I almost missed it. Take a look. The talk show host? What do you think? A writer trapped in a dream world attempts to write a story to shape reality around him and escape. He is beset by visions leaking in from realities beyond his own. He uses those visions as inspiration for his stories in hopes of giving them power to make them come true. Us, hidden few, know that ultimately he will succeed. But before that, many of his stories collapse back into the stuff that dreams are made of to remain as they began, works of fiction. And yet, maybe there is a gleam of truth to be unearthed from these tales. Rare glimpse into the unseen realities beyond our own, offering us intriguing avenues of contemplation as they transpire in the night spring. It's pretty cool, considering he's the one that pretty much narrates the Night Springs intros, as you'll see in the coming videos. Uh, I, I really like... Uh, I, I like hearing the guy talk. He's he's got a like a really cool, smooth voice. I I really love his voice. Um, but he's not the only one that's got new videos. And it's funny that if you guys remember when we're when we initially meet Thomas Zane, and uh, he's talking about how him and Alan used to work together. Uh, on the TV, you see Jesse. You see Casper Darling, uh, and then they're never mentioned again, pretty much. Well, you actually have... There's actually a couple of videos of Casper Darling. Uh, we've been wondering what he's been up to since the end of Control, since he's gone missing. Since basically he went into whatever universe. He, he's he shifted realities, like he's no longer in the Control universe, as far as we could tell. But regardless... Uh, these videos are, are pretty cool. I actually really like them. Let's check them out. This is Dr. Casper Darling, formerly of the Federal Bureau of Control. 
I think the signal is coming through now. Are you receiving me? I mean, something... Something shifted. The previously observed interference disrupting my broadcast has gone. Fluctuation in gravitational forces, either something moved out of the way or my relative position to a change with the alignment and or the uh, condition of this whole plane spiral to a more favorable position. The ordinary rules of reality do not apply here. That's what I can describe. This place is a dreamscape. Who's the dreamer? And how do you wake up from this dream? I, I've been taking readings with the limited equipment I've been able to secure. Some, some riveting data accumulating. Hypotheses taking shape. My, my struggle with this that the way this place works makes any hypothesis immediately come back to alter and contaminate the data. Anyway, I've been, uh, I've been working to capture and isolate and amplify certain frequencies from the background radiation and the noise, so... Let's see what happens. Force. 
Yes. 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 We have to start to methodically test uh -huh. and eliminate various works of art within the bounds of which you can wildly improvise. So those are pretty good, right? They're uh, they're they're pretty. I don't want to say cringy, but they're pretty tongue in cheek. They're 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 pretty nice. I like them a lot. One of the big questions I had uh, near the end of the game, when Saga gets thrown into the dark place, Torn Odin just walk right into the uh, the ocean, the lake, ocean, whatever you want to call it, and we never see him again. Right before the very end of the game. We do actually meet them in New Game Plus. Check it out. Hey, kiddo. We were afraid we'd miss you again. So good to see you. Glad we caught you, kiddo. We missed you first time around. First time? We've been performing on door show. We finally buried the hatchet. I haven't buried shit, bro. We're just helping Tom. I'm leaving the dark place. Come with me. Our time back there is done. But you got this, dear Saga. Body has set up a puddle for you to swim out of. Once more with feeling. I wish we'd gotten more time together. This isn't goodbye, kiddo. Tom told us not to say anything about what's coming, but we'll see each other again. And finally, the video everyone's been waiting for, the actual ending, the extended version of the ending. I'm going to hold my thoughts until the very end, until after you guys watch it. Let's take a look. Alan? Saga. I finished it. The ending we talked about. I have the clicker. And the bullet of light. Let's do this. I have to be the one to do it. I see it clearly now. This part at least. Okay. We have met here before. Time loops in the dark place. Every choice you make affects everything that comes before and after you make it. He's here. Like it does when you change a detail in a story you're writing. Casey? The end. Scratch. Bell. <laughs> when the bullet of light blew the darkness out of the crater of my skull, the dark presence was born from the remains, feeding on the horror around it to grow. was hungry for more and I was missing the small part of myself that it had been born from Alice love is strange even apart we're still together in our memories we put each other through hell to set us free again and again different versions of us Alice helped me get there where I needed to go it has taken so long the process to change reality is so delicate to be true in just the right way and still find a way past our flaws. So many drafts, so many photographs, so many lives lived outside of time, an eternity apart on this journey to finally arrive here. Anderson. 
Logan? <laughs> Logan? Are you all right? I had a terrible nightmare. Can you come home, Mom? Oh, baby. It's over now. You're all right. I'm here. I'm on my way home. I love you. She's all right. Just gone. At last. Thank you, my love. And so I return. With me, I bear the torch of knowledge, the light, the miracle illuminated. The master of two worlds. No, the master of many worlds. So a lot of people have been saying this is a fairly satisfying ending. I don't really think it is. It certainly brings up more questions than answers. Uh, it makes Alan kind of seem like the beginning of a villain now. Um... Could be Scratch actually took over Alan Wake. You know what I mean? Like the bullet, he's impervious to it now, or he, I don't know, he gained control over it. I don't know. But, you know, the, the what is he? The, the creator of like many worlds? I don't know. That sounds like a pretty villainous line to me, but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that ensemble. Uh, I'm, again, I don't know if I missed anything. Um, Again, there aren't many sites. Even Reddit hasn't really um, created as of as of making this video. There's no real good place to get like a breakdown of all the different changes. I found a few sites. Some of them, they said like, "Oh, there's an extra line of dialogue here." I checked uh, against my own footage, my initial playthrough. I didn't find any difference. So, again, I don't really know. Uh, I don't want to say this is a comprehensive list. Like, well. It is comprehensive, but is it a complete list? Probably not. But those are exact. Those are what I found, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do with it. If there's more later, we'll see. And that's it for the main campaign of Alan Wake Two. Uh, on to the DLC. I'll see you guys in the next one.